Hi everyone! So today I'm going to talk about starting YouTube, the preparation, and the process. And I'm going to divide my conversation and discussion in the following sections. First, I'm going to talk about recording, and then I'm going to talk about editing. So recording and editing are the prep work before you upload your video. And after you upload your video, you would like to increase views and increase subscribers. Then we need promotion and collaboration. So that's after you upload the videos. So first, for recording, it's very important to not emphasize too much on your recording tool. And um, I'm referring to, let's say, your camera. It doesn't have to be super HD. And to be very honest with you, my first video was recorded with my laptop. And it's not very HD, but at the same time, because it's not so HD, it may be more comfortable with seeing my own face because HD cameras enhance all your flaws and um, all the imperfections on your skin, on your face. So if you're not totally comfortable with seeing every inch of your skin and every single pore on your face, I recommend you to start with a not so HD camera. And this not only is less pricey, but also may help with your confidence level when you first start YouTube. And then I also emphasize getting yourself more hyped up for your videos and I'm kind of guilty of this because I don't seem really excited in front of the camera just because I'm still a little camera shy, but I find that drinking coffee or even Red Bull, um, other energy drinks such as Rockstar, these kind of things really make your heart beat faster and they also make you talk faster and make you seem more excited about things. And some people drink a little bit of alcohol before they record and obviously if you're underage don't do that but if you're an adult and you're at the legal drinking age and you feel that alcohol might help you then yeah for sure. Then yeah for sure you can try that. And also one more really important things to practice and you don't necessarily have to practice the things that you're going to say in your videos you can just practice talking in front of the mirror or even recording yourself just randomly rambling about issues and this can really help boost your confidence and also make you become more comfortable seeing your own face and making you more comfortable in front of the camera and also remember that the first shot may not be your best shot and always feel comfortable enough to delete your previous shots and start over again this is very time consuming sometimes you may think this is super tedious and um, you might not feel as good for your second and third shots because you've done it before But it is very important to have a good base video to edit the better your footages are the less time you spend on editing and in the long run you'll find that having a good footage is more important than spending hours and hours just editing that video because no matter how much time you spend on editing some things cannot be edited away and some of the pauses in the middle they're very very time consuming to go to milliseconds and chop off those pauses so it's more important to have a better footage than to spend hours editing those flaws of your footage Another really important thing is to organize your ideas first. And some people like to write out a very detailed list of things that they're going to say. Or some other YouTubers might even write out their whole speech. But how I do it is I get a notebook and I list out all the things that I want to say in bullet points. And this way I can talk more naturally but at the same time I know what my next point is. So when I'm talking to the camera I don't have to pause as much and I won't lose my train of thought. And another tip that really helped me is keeping a YouTube notebook or simply keeping a list of YouTube ideas on your phone. And how I do it is I have this app called Reminders and it should be included on your iPhone. I just have a list called YouTube and over here I just jot down all the ideas that I randomly have when I'm waiting for the bus or when I have time I just jot it down or even before I go to sleep and I just jot down all the ideas and after I'm done I just click on it and it disappears so this is a really easy simple way to keep track of all my ideas and make sure that when I have an idea and I can't record immediately I can still record it some other time and with editing, it is very important to realize that your editing software does not have to be the best one. It does not have to have all those advanced functions. Your editing software only needs to have copy, cut, 
paste, all these very basic functions. And for example, if you have a Mac, you can use iMovie. If you have a Windows, you can use Windows Movie Maker. To me, I feel like these two are pretty, um, I wouldn't say similar, but they include all the basic functions that you need to edit your video. If you're very comfortable with the basic software, then you can upgrade to Final Cut Pro or other paid softwares. But I really don't see a necessity of upgrading to a paid editing software before you master the basic ones. And when I edit my videos, I don't do just one round. I always do a rough edit and then fine editing. And this means that I do a rough edit, I chop out all the long pauses, and when I go to my second round, I chop off all the little pauses. And the third round, I just check for flaws, such as if my project didn't focus well, or I spent too much time talking on just one project and not the rest. So it's very important to start rough and go fine. And another important tip is don't do your video editing in just one sitting because oftentimes I find myself finish editing my footage and after I go to sleep or after I work on something else, I come back and I see more flaws. And this is because it's the same as writing your essay. You don't necessarily see all the flaws within just one sitting. You have to take a break, do something else, and then when you come back, you can see other flaws or other imperfections that you haven't realized before. And in terms of promotion, the basic ones are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and it is your choice if you want to put your videos on your personal page or your public page. For Facebook, it is your personal Facebook page with all your family and friends, or you can also make a fan page where you can interact with your fans. And I chose to share my YouTube videos with my friends and family. And at first, I was really hesitant of doing so because I didn't want them to judge me or I didn't want them to laugh at my videos, but I realized that it's more beneficial because they are a set audience and I don't have to wait to gain more fans until I can promote my videos effectively. And same as Twitter, you can always open a new Twitter just for your YouTube channel. But if your Twitter already has a set audience reading your daily tweets, then I feel that it is more time efficient and it is also more effective to put your YouTube videos onto your personal Twitter. And that goes the same to Instagram. You can put them on your personal personal Instagram if you're comfortable with it and if not you can always open up a new Instagram and you can put let's say thumbnails or a screenshot of footages onto your Instagram and you can also do giveaways and you can also ask your subscribers or fans questions and this can really help with your audience engagement and interaction. And another very important platform is Google Plus and I'm not sure how many YouTubers actually use Google Plus right now but I find it really helpful for just joining different communities and after asking the owner for permission you can put your YouTube videos onto those communities and I found that this has really helped with the growth of my channel so I'll keep doing this and I hope that you guys can try it too I really find that this is a very effective way of promoting your videos and people actually watch it some people comment and for most YouTube accounts, they're already linked with your Google account. So it's very simple and quick to open up a Google Plus page. And lastly, I'm going to talk about collaboration. And I have to confess that I haven't done a lot of collaborations in the past, but my advice to you is to first grow your channel and have a set number of subscribers, let's say 100. And this way it enhances your credibility and it also makes you become more experienced with making videos because collaboration is more time consuming and you also need to have a lot of trust, both you to the other YouTuber and the other YouTuber to you. So if you have more videos and you have more subscribers, the person you're collaborating with will respect you more and will trust you more and this is very important in doing your collaboration. So make sure you have more than enough time to do your collaboration because from personal experience I can tell you that collaboration takes up a lot more time than doing it on your own. When you're doing it on your own you can always find a time that you're available and you can do it daytime or nighttime, whatever time you want. But for collaboration, you still have to make sure the other person or if you're collaborating with more than one person, you have to make sure their schedule matches with yours, which is always a pain in the butt. So I would say first focus on recording your own videos and editing your own videos and promoting your own videos. And then collaboration should be the last thing that you consider because it does require, I would say, a mastery of making YouTube videos.
hope these tips helped you guys in planning and preparing your YouTube videos. Feel free to add more tips in the comment section. Let me know and let other YouTubers know what your tips are and what advice you have for making videos. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye! So today I'm going to create this summer look. It shows how fun and how bright summer is.